Hello again, Vinyl Community, it's Matt here, and today we have a very special unboxing video. And in this box should be a very special Beatles Revolver box set. So, let's take a look, shall we? Now, I made a little bit of a mistake, and I should have learned from last year with the Let It Be box set, but I ordered this directly through the, the Beatles website, you know, the online store. You would think that you would get it quicker. <laughs> By doing that but it actually takes several days longer than ordering through Amazon not only that it's more expensive I just it's just one of those things where I I just I didn't want to miss out on it you know with the pre-order situation so anyway we've got uh, we've got the tape off right here so we've got some nice styrofoam padding on the top Let's take oh nice. Well, let's take this whole piece out. This is interesting. The whole thing is kind of encased, almost in a block of ice, <laughs> like this. So let's take the top off. And why is it taped? I don't know. Oh, here we go. There we go. Oh, it's hinged. That's neat. Look at this. It's kind of like on a hinge thing. Interesting. Here it is. Let me take this out in all of its glory. Right there. Look at that beauty. <laughs> Almost don't want to unseal it, but you know, we're gonna have to, aren't we? Um so yeah, here it is. And uh, let's look at the back. There's the back. So first thing to notice of course is both the the front, I'm sorry for the for the glare on here, but the front and the back uh pretty much mirror the UK um uh, revolver sleeve uh, we've got a made in Czech Republic stick it down here which uh, there we go and um, we've got the whole track listing but of course not just the regular revolver track listing we've also got all of the extra stuff all right so take a little break for a second just to tr try to peel some of the shrink wrap back um, I like to try to keep the shrink wrap on if possible um, here's the hype sticker, by the way. I didn't show that a minute ago, but um, very nice. Tells us, of course, we've got the new stereo mix, um, the two session LPs with, you know, the, the demos and rehearsals and so on. Uh, we then have an original 1966 mono LP. So um, I believe that they went in and redid the mono. I don't think it's from the 2014 uh, mono mixes that were done. But somebody maybe can correct me on that. But anyway, hopefully this shrink holds up. You know, if it ends up coming off, it comes off, I guess. But um, I did the same thing with the Lady B box set, and it was okay. So let's dig into this, shall we? Let's have a little look. The one thing I'm not crazy about, I don't know if you can tell, but there's quite a bend. Uh, you know, it's difficult to tell. But I think just from, from where the shrink wrap was on there so tightly, a little bend in the box there. But... Um, not the end of the world so let's uh let's dig into this so the very top here we go we've got our this must be the mix i guess the uh the new mix yeah because it says stereo on the top top right here um let's have a look Nice white inner sleeve. I do like the fact that it's polylined. Saves me having to put in a, a sleeve myself. And here we go. The traditional yellow and black labels with the silver font. And that looks uh, looks nice and flat, so that's good. Um, yeah, made in the EU. Which of course we knew because the uh, the box had made in the Czech Republic. Let's put this back in. Okay. Next. Let's see what else we've got in here. The 
This is the Revolver Sessions double LP. Now, uh, this cover was one that I believe Robert, did Robert Freeman do this? I feel like he may have done. Um, uh, Robert Freeman did a number of earlier, the covers on a, for an earlier number of, of, let me restart that. He did the, the artwork for a number of earlier Beatles covers. And I think he put this one together. Um, interestingly, I have a feeling he may not have known the title of the album yet, that it was going to be called Revolver. And it's just interesting because when you look at the shape of this, it's round, looks like it could easily revolve uh, with all the faces kind of stitched together like that. So this was a rejected uh, piece of artwork. The um, the back, go similar to the normal Revolver uh back sleeve oh inside here we've got our ep or our uh, yeah which we'll take a look at in just a second but um let's have a look in the middle of this nice i don't know this may be like an unseen photo i don't immediately recognize it um but not that i know all of the all of the photos from the revolver sessions anyway but um Let's take this out. Nice thing about about this is we've got these were the uh, I think the the acetate labels that, that were used by Parlophone back in the sixties. So they've used that here, which is kind of neat. Um, these revolver sessions. There we go. So I know there's. Uh, some interesting stuff, I believe, on these sessions, but we're going to have a little lesson in a bit, which I won't be able to play due to copyright, but I'll come back and report on it. <laughs> and here's the other, the other one right here. Very cool. So let's have a look at this EP. Comes in the, the sort of traditional style Parlophone seven inch sleeve. Oh, this is on heavyweight vinyl. Oh, I think uh, it's probably heavier than it would have been back in the day. I'm not sure though. But anyway, um, this has on it paperback rider and rain on both sides. And I believe that side one are new stereo mixes and side two are original mono mixes. Now paperback rider and rain, of course, were not included on revolver, but they were recorded uh, for single release. Um, during the revolver sessions. The only slight difference with the sleeve is I think the originals would have been top loading, whereas this is side loading, but uh, not a big deal. Okay, we also have here the uh, mono version of revolver. Um, I have a few versions of the mono, of the you know original mono mix. Um, now, I'm trying to think if this has the withdrawal mix of Tomorrow Never Knows or if it's on the session. Um, let me have a look. Well, I don't know if the de dead bikes will tell us actually. Yeah, no. Um, let me check. Let me check the back of the box real quick. Because <laughs> I know it's on here. Um, let me have a look here. Uh, oh, okay, it's on the sessions. Okay, so um, yeah, the the notorious or infamous uh, remix eleven of Tomorrow Never Knows, which was very quickly withdrawn, um, is on one of the session LPs. So that's nice to have. I do already have it. Actually, I do have. Uh, a 606-1 six six uh, revolver, um, which I got uh, reasonably recently. It was earlier this year. Um, I don't think I've shown it in a video, but uh, anyway, it's nice to have it here as well. And last but not least, we have this very uh, nice looking revolver book. Oh, that's cool. If you look very carefully, you guys aren't going to be able to see this, but it's got like the outline of the hair from the cover, like the stringy, straggly hair. So that's cool. Let's have a look. Oh, there's that little 
that little bit of crackle there as we open it. Um, it's got an introduction by Paul McCartney. Here's kind of the the contents right there. Um, there's the flower, the foreword by Paul McCartney right there. There he is. Um, we've got an introduction here from Giles Martin. That's nice. I don't know what else is in here. Let's have a quick look. A bunch of photos, I guess. Um, huh. That's kind of cool. I, I do think, actually, I, I like the Beatles' look from this time. Um, they they just looked cool, especially Paul, with when he, when he has the glasses on and everything. I don't know if there's any pictures where he has them on in here, but maybe we'll see. Um, yeah, there's one. There he goes. I just think I just think it's a cool look. I like all of them had a really cool look around this time. So yeah, it looks like uh, ah nice okay. So not only do we have a lot of photos, but check this out. Okay, we've got notes for every single song. Um, this one we've got a lyric sheet which is nice. We've got uh, part of the AMI tape here from the box. Uh, the AMI uh, cassette or tape box, uh, not cassette, <laughs> the tape box um, from the uh, the four track tape, I guess. It's another one for Good Day Sunshine. Yeah, this is a very uh, nice looking book, I have to say. It's got notes about the revolver reception. Oh, it's got a interesting looking kind of comic strip back here. We'll have to check that out. Um, yeah, really nice. Um, and just, yeah, a lot of pictures. Um, looks like there's notes about, about the recording sessions and everything. Um, oh, cool. All right, well, I'm going to go give this a listen. It's going to take a while, but anyway. Um, so, I will be back with a report on how everything sounds. So, stay tuned. All right, so we're back. We're back, having given everything a listen. Okay. So, let me give you my overall thoughts. Um... So I uh, I do like the remix, um, and I think in terms of comparing, not the quality of the remix, but let's say the impact it had on me, perhaps uh, in terms of you know how blown away I was compared to the four other box sets that have been done, so Sergeant Pepper, uh, the White Album, Abbey Road, and Let It Be. I think this is somewhere in the middle, um, but there are several highlights uh, for sure. Um, so let, let's go through them. Um, I mean, the, f the first thing to, to mention uh, with the remix is that the stereo separation is considerably improved. We don't have a lot of this hard left, right panning, you know, vocals on one side, all the guitars on the other side, that sort of thing. Um, and actually, I, I found the, the sort of story of how these mixes were put together to be pretty fascinating. All this technology, this... Uh, from Peter Jackson's company, um, I thought it was fascinating that they were able to able to separate out um, instruments from a four-track tape and and s actually get them to be split over sort of eight, nine, ten different tracks. Uh, absolutely amazing, really. Um, it's going to be fascinating to see if that technology can be applied to maybe some of the kind of lost stereo uh, masters. So. You know, she loves you as one in particular. Um, if and when Giles Martin gets to that, that it's going to be really interesting. But anyway, I digress. Back to this. Um, so let's look at some of the highlights. Um, Elena Rigby, the strings sound fantastic. Uh, blown away. Um, they, you know, they, they sounded good before. You know, the but again, the original stereo mix, you've got a lot of this extreme hard panning to the left or right. The remix, uh, everything is centered so much. Uh, more nicely, vocals and drums in particular. Um, not the drums <laughs> really applies to Eleanor Rigby, but you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, it it uh, you're actually getting like proper stereo separation. You know, you're hearing bits of the string in one ear than the other. Um, I thought that sounded terrific. Um, let's see other highlights. Um, Good day sunshine. Um, I thought 
that's a song it sounds more clinical now that's you know neither a bad good thing or a bad thing i always thought that these the piano and everything that just had a very slightly muddy sound to it um it sounds way clearer to me with the remix um again for better or worse uh, but just something i noticed um annual bird can sing that sounds terrific the harmonies in it especially the second verse but the whole the whole thing just uh kind of a sit up and take notice moment it's like oh yeah there you go they kind of boosted that up um got to get you into my life um the 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 brass arrangement in that also sounds like it's been boosted and, and now really is kind of front and center and it's more noticeable than it was before i mean it was always noticeable with the original mix but now it's uh it's really kind of in your face and i think as it should be it's it's, it's so integral to to the song um that that's really nice to have that be really kind of taking center stage um tomorrow never knows some of the sound effects and actually yellow submarine too let's let's take both of those some of the interesting sound effects of those uh, have been boosted up it sounds to me uh, again it i i don't know if i'd say it necessarily improves either of those but it does make the songs interesting uh, for sure um so those were some of the highlights uh for the remix um the um the modern master sounds good i did not yet do a direct comparison with the 2014 um mono uh, release which, which I, I do have or the 1966 uh, mono uh, releases uh, again i had i have a couple of those i haven't compared them directly you know kind of listen to one and go back and listen to the other but it sounded very nice very clean um f as for the sessions on here i thought these were absolutely fascinating actually um and I'd heard something about this, and I didn't know what people were talking about, but now I've listened to it, I kind of get it. Um, so the song Rain, again, which was the B-side to Paperback Writer from the Revolver Sessions, the original of that is actually quite a bit faster. Not the vocals, but the original backing track is considerably faster than, than, than what ended up in Revolver, and then they slowed it down to give it this sort of slightly otherworldly... Uh, feel to it um very clever and you listen to the original and you think oh you know the original speed and you, you think oh you know it, it sounds good but it's very jarring um and then and then when you listen to how it slowed down it's like okay it's kind of crazy how they did that i didn't realize they did it um let's see um what else do i think was interesting with the uh sessions um Actually, all of it was. I really liked the Island of Rigby stuff with the speech. Uh, uh, you can hear um, like George Martin, Paul McCartney, they're kind of talking about talking about whether to add um, vibrato to the strings. And honestly, I, I'm not a musician. I don't, I don't really get it. And I'm thinking, I didn't hear a lot of difference between the two. I'm sure many musicians would, <laughs> and they'd be like, "You're crazy." One, they sound way different, but. Um, but they did seem to agree on it that there wasn't that much difference, uh, which was interesting. But and um, and of course we've got tomorrow never knows. Uh, there's a take one is on here as well, but also uh, the uh, notorious remix eleven that was very quickly shelved and replaced with remix eight back in 1966. So very cool. And then uh, the Revolver EP, um, Paperback Rider and Rain, they both sound really good. I, I have to say, a um, uh, little confession, I had listened to Paperback Right already on Tidal, digital streaming, uh, and at first I thought it sounded terrible, then I realized I was accidentally listening to the Dolby Atmos version on a regular stereo, so that's why it didn't sound good, and then I found the correct version, uh, but I did give that a spin again, and um, uh, that does sound good, it's, uh, that one though, um, there were parts of it I didn't think were maybe quite such an improvement as some of the other songs on here over the original stereo mix, but uh, uh, I did like it, and it, 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 it does sound more modern, I, I put it that way. Uh, the Rain sounded great as well. I, I maybe would say Rain has never sounded better. Um, yeah, yeah. One other thing to note, I noticed some people had said that, um, going back to the original mix, that she said she said 
they'd criticized uh, that the symbols had kind of disappeared. I see what people are saying. They have been toned down, um, and the original was very symbol heavy. Um, you know, the cr crashing symbols of certain parts of the song. I, I don't mind it. You know, the point is, this is a remix. Um, if you want it to be identical to the original 1966 mix, go and go and buy a 1966 copy of Revolver, uh, or at least a, a copy that has that original mix on it. Um, this is supposed to be a remix, so differences are to be expected, and um, it, it by lowering the cymbals, it, it does bring out the vocals a little more, so it's not all bad. Uh, I, I thought it was an interesting listen. It, it's, it's one of my least favorite songs on the album, to be honest, so I didn't have that strong of an opinion on it, but, but there we go. So uh yeah i think that's it i think we're gonna wrap it up here we've been i've been rambling on for long enough but yeah so very excited to have this um and i guess i guess rubber soul may be next um i don't know maybe next year i don't know where else they go um if not rubber soul the only other assuming they're at least trying to stick roughly chronologically kind of sort of kind of um I mean, you could maybe do Magical Mystery Tour, if that can be remixed, especially the likes of I'm the Walrus, which uh, I think they did finally get um, a true stereo mix sorted out for the Love album, as I remember. But uh, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll see what comes next. Magical Mystery Tour, Rubber Soul. Um, yeah, exciting time. So, all right, guys, thank you as always for watching. Always appreciate everybody's... Uh, comments and uh, everybody who subscribes and uh, yeah let me know if you intend to get the the box set um and if not see if not vinyl then maybe cd and if you've already got it let me know what you think of it all right till next time guys bye bye